All right, so I just have two more things that I wanted to go through here um, before before we're going to start moving into um, some some uh, heavier, more layered panelization, right? Where we're going to start to look at louver assemblies and stuff like that in a greater way. Uh, but uh, that's going to be tomorrow. But tonight, I want you to um, understand before you leave here tonight the idea of um, variable logic, right? So I kind of in introduced a few of them um, with how we're doing variable logic in, in um, the actual panelization, how we're doing it through a cull pattern. Um, but I want you to also understand variable logic in, for instance, the, the um, x, y, and z coordinates, or the u, v, n cor uh, axes, uh, depending on how you're modifying certain surfaces. I also want you to um, be aware of like how that works with rotators as well. Um, so it's just I, I, I just want you to see these things because then once you see them and you've done them once or twice, you at least remember that it can be done, and then you can seek out the resources again when you need to do it again. You can look at these videos or other videos. So um, <clears throat> go back to um, your Grasshopper file and make sure the information is on that we've been working with so your call pattern <clears throat> which looks really cool with nothing else on it um, that looks pretty neat just kind of floating out there in space anyway um, and then go back and just turn the other things on that relate to it so we've got our panels that they live on uh, that's actually the scaled panel that's wrong um, these and then you have the original surface four point, the, the competing complementary surface four point right here. <clears throat> so um, with these, I'm going to uh, first kind of just insert more variable logic, right? So the idea here is that um, we, we are simulating developing these definitions so that when you design, you can make changes on the fly. Right, like everything is super parametric, so that you can just jump back into the definition at any point and make a change, and then as it flows through down the line, the rest of the definition, it'll just automatically populate that change. So, um, in this particular case, what I want to test is that if I change my rotators on on these panels, if I just change my rotators to then have a, a variable sequence, um, hopefully that'll give me a uh, the right result going all the way down and nothing will get disjointed. So what I want to do is take that idea of gradient of the perforations. So I created a gradient scale on the perforations and I'm also going to produce a gradient rotation in the panels themselves. Um, so that happens all the way back um, here with this, um, with this radiance figure. Okay, so what we have, we have um, 15 different geometries that are plugged in, and they all have a rotational axis, and that's all well and good, yeah, sure. Um, but <clears throat> then what I want to do is, is make sure that each of the, um, radi or each of the uh, degrees of rotation is going to be slightly different. Okay, and so I can do that using a series, and I can create steps and all this other stuff. And uh, we'll, we'll start off with, with series, I think. Um, so I'm going to go to set and sequence, and I'm going to use a series. And so series is going to start from a value of zero. And the step is going to be, I guess I'll do up to 90 degrees. We have like 20 panels. So I'll just make the step like five to eight degrees, something like that. We'll play around with that. Oh wait, sorry, I needed that to be zero. Copy paste, make this five degrees. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to start my series at zero. My um, 
step size is going to be five. And so the key is now um, understanding the count, right? So the, well, the count and then how it's actually structured and being plugged in. So with the, the count, what I need to do is basically just count how many panels there are. And so I can go to these. Yeah, yeah, I'll count it off of that. I'll go to uh, set and list, and I'm going to measure the list length of this list right here. Is there only 15 panels? I thought I had 20. Anyway, um, so 15 panels, and so this should read, actually, it might only read one. I might need to flatten it. Yeah, it will. So it's going to read one because every single one of those panels is in a different separate group. So when I flatten that list, what it's going to do is create a number 15. Okay, so that is going to plug into my count. Actually, I might need a subtractor. Hang on. So I plug that into the count, and what I get is 15 numbers. That's right, because it's series. So I get 15 numbers, not 15 steps. Uh, that's good. In fact, I can change. I'm going to change this to like 7 degrees. Yeah, cool. All right. So these are going to be my, my rotations, right? And I want them to read in radians, so I'm going to have to convert them to radians. Um, and I can do that by um, basically overriding this. But I want you to be aware that the, the angle of rotation is not going to behave the way you would expect. It's not going to take each one and apply it to each successive item. So when I plug that in, oh, I should have saved. There we go. Ooh, this is going to be a mess. I should have saved. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is what's happening. What it's doing is rotating every single one of those elements all those times, 15 times, seven degrees apart for every one. So I've got the task of breaking this list into 15 individual items. And so what I can do, essentially, let me disconnect this so we don't get confused here. Um, well, that's weird. Oh, because that's default. Um, what I can do is graft the list. I think it's going to graft it into individual items. So when I graft it, this is the reverse of flattening. And let me just check it before I plug it in. Go. Zero, point one, two, point two, four, so on and so forth, all the way down um, until it gets to the maximum value. Okay, so the key for these kinds of things is make sure that you have the right number of items in the right number of sublists as you plug it in. So this is going to plug in here, and you'll see that it will adjust. Um, to the, the, oh, look at that, that's weird. That's reading them in a really weird order. That's super odd. I need to investigate this. Um, yeah, so it's working, and that's good. So all the cool thing is everything that happens beyond the, everything that happens beyond um, this particular component is is mapping right right so the the frits all rotated properly and they're still in their proper orientation however it looks like the least rotated panel this one right here um, is in a very odd and unexpected location so I'm gonna uh, kind of segue into trying to figure out why that is and then trying to make sure that I can reorder it so that it kind of you know goes across the board here if I have enough time to do that here here tonight any questions? So not much different, right? It's, it's the same principle, you're just seeing it in a different way. And so you just need to be careful about the form that that, that, that information takes. Because I had to flatten it, and then I had to run the series, 
and then I had to convert it to radians, and then I had to graft it back into groups.